in a world where the meta is all over the place. One man unites pros to bring some sense to the players. This is his solution. Wham bam, here comes Pam! Hello fellow brawlers, <laughs> hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kyra Stein and it is time for version 10 of the tier list and no, I I'm not just talking about Pam, although she is very strong right now. <laughs> like always, we've got tons of pros working together to bring you guys the best competitive tier list for Brawl Stars. And we're gonna start with the changes from the gem grab tier list. And uh, there you guys have it right there. Make sure you screenshot that while it's still up. Starting off guys, we've got Nita replacing Daryl as the golden S tier brawler for gem grab. Nita's got a lot of good things going for her in gem grab. She's got good range, health, a ridiculously fast reload speed and her ability to push enemy brawlers back with her super, making her a very prevailing control option. As a melee brawler, she's also an excellent option to synergize with the new jump pads. Terra is moving from the A tier up into the S tier. Now the biggest reason why Terra is actually coming up into the S tier is because with the recent nerfs to a lot of the brawlers that were very much up in your face, they actually forced her to use her super before she was ready to. She's able to save her super until it really counts, allowing her to completely turn the tide of the match in gem grab. Daryl is actually moving from the golden S tier position number one in gem grab down into the A tier. Now the nerf to his auto reloading super means that he is not nearly able to pose a, as much of a threat as frequently as he was in the past and this actually leads to a loss of early game control that makes it difficult for him to recover. Mortis is also moving from the S tier down into the A tier. The fact that he received a 22% healing decrease to his star power makes it so that a max out more Mortis can no longer just stay on the field permanently, and that makes him less of an immortus as some may have called him in the past. Leon is also moving from the S tier down into the A tier. That's right guys, it is no longer the assassin meta. He had another hit to his damage, and since he does operate a lot through burst damage, he actually suffers from a lot of vulnerability after using his attacks if the enemy brawler is not taken out, and this has led to Leon being less of a favorable option. Poco is also moving from the S tier down into the A tier. Since a lot of the more aggressive brawlers are less of a viable option, Poco is also less of a viable option because he tends to rely on those aggressive brawlers for his super to actually be impactful. This makes the S tier Pam uh, a much better option in most situations. Barley's actually moving from the B tier up into the A tier. Because those aggressive brawlers were actually nerfed and Barley's attack damage was actually buffed, Barley has become a much more powerful control option. We also have Bull and El Primo moving from the non-ranked up into the B tier. The reason why is strictly because they are solid options on maps with jump pads. And one thing about the B tier is that these are for brawlers that are good with either a specific map or a specific team comp. Gene is also starting up in the B tier. He has some conflicting uh, abilities like the fact that he can't deal enough burst damage as a brawler that relies on being able to hook people close to him so he can burst them down. And his one redeeming trait is the fact that his super can actually take a gem carrier and bring it onto your side of the map, solidifying a victory for you guys. But that's not nearly as easy to do with Gene as it is for Terra, and therefore he's being placed in the B tier as a good option uh, if you have the right team comp for it. Okay, up next we've got the solo showdown tier list, and as you can tell, some of these brawlers actually have little badges next to them if they're considered to be some of the best brawlers for a specific event mod. This is due to the fact that we no longer have an option between regular showdown and event mod showdown. Typically healing mushroom is best for brawlers with high DPS that are also close range. Robot spawn benefits brawlers that have high DPS. Energy drink typically benefits brawlers that are really good at controlling a specific location or they have significant DPS or they have attacks that are really easy to land once they do get that energy drink. And of course meteor shower benefits longer range brawlers that can stay clear of other players. Starting off, we have Bull moving from the S tier down into the A tier. He's just not dominant on all of the maps like he has been in the past, and he is definitely not a favorable option to team with, and if you're playing competitive showdown, that means that he will be targeted very frequently by teamers. Rico is moving from the B tier up into the A tier. You could say that Thicko's a big boy now. Uh, he's got sufficient DPS and potential to poke around corners that does allow him to do well on the right map um, with the right skill. Barley's also moving from the B tier up into the A tier. This is simply due to the fact that he's getting increased damage that allows him to more easily deal with the threats of solo showdown. Gene is also being 
moved up into the A tier. The fact that Gene has a longer range attack means that he's able to deal with threats from afar. On top of that, he can also use his super to pull brawlers up close to him for a very quick and easy kill, regardless of walls. We also have Shelly moving from the A tier down into the B tier. A lot of this is due to the fact that a lot of the more aggressive brawlers have become less of a viable option, and that means that they need to be countered less frequently, and so she's just less useful in Solo Showdown, and no one is going to team with a, <laughs> with a Shelly, that's for sure. Piper was removed from the B tier list and is moving into the non-ranked category because she's just not competitive. A lot of this is due to the fact that she's just too vulnerable to close up brawlers, and the fact that the Stop the Spin initiative is helping a little bit, people are backstabbing a little bit more, that means that she does tend to struggle a little bit when she does team with people. One thing to note with Piper is that she, although is not competitive on regular Showdown, if she is on Meteor Shower, or if she's on energy drink, then she can be a competitive option. The same is also true with Poco uh, for energy drink. Okay guys, up next we've got the duo showdown tier list, and once again a nice reminder though, if you do have a brawler that has one of those badges next to it and you've got a specific event mod going on with them, they might be actually worth playing, even if they're not the highest ranking for the tier list. First off, we've got Barley moving from the A tier up into the S tier. In solo showdown, Barley struggles against those aggressive type brawlers, but with a teammate in duo showdown, he's able to overcome those aggressive brawlers much easier. His recent buff and the fact that he's able to deal damage to brawlers from a long distance away is what makes him such an incredible option. Also moving from the A tier up into the S tier is Crow. The fact that his poison helps to prevent healing, deters enemies, and also helps to protect against crucial susceptibility to pinching from enemy teams. His recent buff wasn't super strong, but it was just enough to justify bringing him up into the S tier for Duo Showdown. Moving from the B tier up into the A tier, we have Rico due to his great damage output and range, which does make him very versatile on many maps. We also have Bull moving from the B tier up into the A tier due to the fact that he's able to zone enemies out of grass and away from boxes. He can also establish an area for his teammates who have longer range than him to operate optimally. Gene is being added into the A tier. His super provides a lethal opportunity to isolate one enemy and force a 2v1 situation, which is what Gene is the best at. Okay guys, up next we've got the heist tier list. Once again, grab that screenshot while you can. Starting off, we have Bull actually taking Daryl's position as the golden S tier brawler for Heist. Both Daryl and Bull are really fantastic options in Heist. The one thing is, is that Daryl recently got a nerf and that means he's not able to super in on the safe as frequently as he used to be able to. And Bull, it has just so much more of a threat. He has more DPS, he has more health. He's an absolute beast in Heist and definitely deserves that golden S tier position. Barley's also moving from the A tier up into the S tier. Throwers have always been really powerful in Heist. It's due to their control that they offer and also the fact that they can actually deal damage while while hiding behind the safe um, and from walls as well. A buff is just what Barley needed to move from the A tier up into the S tier. Brock is also moving from the A tier up into the S tier. Brock represents the most dominant ranged threat in Heist. He can deal massive amounts of damage with his regular attack, and once he charges up his super, he can deal tons of damage to enemy brawlers and the Heist safe at the same time. Colt is moving from the S tier down into the A tier. He's simply just overshadowed by Brock. He has less range, it's more difficult for him to land his shots, and quite frankly, he's just not as cool as Brock. Though he does have great hair. Jessie is moving from the B tier up into the A tier. She's definitely one of those brawlers that have been considered underrated in previous metas, and now more and more people are recognizing how strong she actually can be. When going on the offense or going on the defense, the fact that you only have to hit one brawler for her to attack to bounce off to other brawlers or possibly even the enemy safe means that she has one of the highest DPSs in the game and that makes her a very strong option even if you do not have her star power, though that does make her an even stronger option. El Primo is also moving from the B tier up into the A tier. He's certainly not as strong as Bull or Daryl, but he's still a great option due to the fact that he has an insanely large amount of health and the fact that he can jump onto the enemy safe, which provides a great opportunity for your team as a whole to really push forward and take out the safe. Spike is moving from the A tier down into the B tier. While he is still a good option, the fact that we have a more prevalence of throwers, including Barley and Dynamite, means that he's just too vulnerable because he has a difficult time dealing with them. Poco is also moving from the A tier down into the B tier, where he used to do really well at supporting some friendly tanks on his team, and those are becoming a little bit less prevalent due to the long range nature of Heist now, and that makes him more team dependent, which is definitely justifiable for the B tier. Leon's also moving from the A tier down 
down into the B tier due to the fact that his DPS nerf was just enough for him to drop down against enemy tanks because he's not able to deal with them on a close range like he used to be able to. Piper is also being removed from the competitive heist tier list. Due to the fact that we have brawlers like El Primo and Duro that are so prevalent in the meta, Piper is almost guaranteed to come within close range combat of an enemy brawler. She suffers a lot defensively when an enemy player is doing a push against her and the fact that he has, she has such a slow reload speed just makes her a very poor option overall in heist. She may have some viability on bridge too far but that is only one map which does not justify playing her consistently. Okay guys, up next, you guess it, the Brawl Ball tier list. Starting off we got Spike from the S tier replacing Daryl as the golden S tier brawler for Brawl Ball. First of all, Daryl's not quite as good in Brawl Ball as he used to be due to his nerf, but second of all, Spike is just so incredibly dominating across all Brawl Ball maps. His range, DPS, the fact that his super creates great opportunities for your team to actually make a push, makes him a solid option in Brawl Ball. Like I said, Daryl is going from the golden S tier position down into the A tier. The fact that his super got nerfed means that he's going to be able to use it less frequently, and while he still is an incredibly strong brawler for Brawl Ball, he's not nearly the powerhouse that he used to be, especially because he really struggles against some of the more control type comps like Terra, Spike, and Nita. We also have Poco moving from the A tier down into the B tier. The fact that some of these more aggressive brawlers have been nerfed means that Poco is just less impactful. He definitely requires a more specific comp, which justifies moving him down into the B tier. Shelly's also moving from the A tier down into the B tier. Most of this is actually due to the fact that Daryl got a nerf and is no longer the prevalent powerhouse that he used to be. Shelly acted as a really strong counter against Daryl, and with less Daryls being played in Brawl Ball, there's less of a need to play Shelly. Jean is being added into the B tier for Brawl Ball. Jean's kind of like a lesser version of Terra. He does less DPS, but he can pull one brawler away from a specific location from a very long range away, and he can also use them to break walls. So he definitely deserves at least to be on the, the Brawl Ball tier list, but uh, most of the time you're better off going with Terra. Up next, guys, we've got the Bounty tier list, and that's not going to be all. We also have the Siege tier list after that. First off, we've got Brock going from the S tier, replacing Mortis as the golden S tier brawler for Bounty. This is partly due to the fact that Mortis received a nerf and that other assassin type brawlers are no longer as prevalent as they were and it's also partly due to the fact that Brock is just an incredible brawler for a bounty he's been golden s tier in the past and definitely deserves it now Pam is moving up from the A tier up into the S tier she is versatile as a long-range brawler as a tank as a support healer as a shield to protect teammates I mean she is so great in long-range comps in aggressive comps Pam is just OP. <laughs> we also have Piper moving from the A tier up into the S tier. She has returned to Bounty. A lot of this is really just due to the fact that these more aggressive assassin brawlers have become less prevalent and uh, they were really good counters against Piper and so she's definitely sitting high as the queen of Bounty. Penny's also moving from the A tier up into the S tier. What she lacks up in strength, she makes up with Lenny. That's right guys, Penny's turret. We're going to go with Lenny. Lenny prevents enemy camping, forces players to come out from hiding behind walls, and since she has respectable range, she definitely deserves that S tier position. We also have Mortis moving from the S, the golden S tier position down to the A tier. Like I mentioned, his nerf made his much, him much less prevalent. It's a lot more difficult for you to, can, to maintain re aggression like he used to have in Bounty. Daryl's also moving from the S tier down to the A tier. The fact that his supercharge is much slower means that he has less opportunities to use it and get up close to counter those long range brawlers. Leon is also moving from the S tier town to the A tier. These poor assassin brawlers, they got hit hard. His damage nerf made it a little bit more difficult for him to really deal damage at a distance, which makes it also difficult for him to charge up his super over a long period of time, and he's just not nearly as strong as he used to be. Poco's moving from the A tier down into the B tier. Bounty has shifted from an aggressive meta where Poco thrived in being able to support his tankier teammates to a meta where Poco doesn't really have as much of an option. He's still good if you have the right team comp, but he's not great. Being removed from the competitive tier list, we have Spike moving from the B tier to the non-ranked tier. Spike just lacks the HP and the consistent damage output from a distance to really um, thrive well in Bounty, and he's just uh, 
not as good as we thought that he was. Okay, guys, up next, we've got the Siege tier list. Now, I did a recent video on the Siege tier list just last week. When that video had been created, we had one opportunity to play one map, and we did some play testing on the other maps with uh, friendly matches and stuff, but since then, we've had a lot of time to really refine the Siege tier list, and we'll go over just a quick few changes now. Starting off, we have Pam actually taking Jesse's spot as the Golden S tier brawler. Now, there was a lot of debate between the pros regarding which brawler should have that number one position for Siege, and it was really close. Ultimately, we decided to go with Pam over Jesse because of the prevalence of throwers that do such a good job at countering Jesse's turret. We also decided to move Bull from the A tier up into the S tier. Bull is able to completely position brawlers and keep them pushed back without even having to fire a shot because you just cannot get up close to him. He has the greatest diving potential out of all of the brawlers, being able to go and deal 31% damage to an enemy Ike turret by himself, and his high damage against enemy bots makes him a very strong option. We're also moving Brock from the B tier up into the A tier. A lot of this is due to the fact that Brock can actually outrange the Ike turret, and while he isn't dominant on all of the maps, he does have that unique ability to reshape the map into a ranged playground, therefore allowing him to be a solid option. We also decided to move Gene from the non-competitive tier up into the B tier. Gene really struggles with having a really low DPS but we did discover that he does have at least some viability in being able to actually pull enemy brawlers into his turret area so that they get taken out, as well as he can actually remove the robot from close up to the Ike turret to the outer perimeter of the Ike's range, which means that the Ike will then quickly target other enemy brawlers. He has really low DPS, but if you're playing him with a really good team comp of other players that are also in the S tier, then he does serve somewhat of a purpose. After a lot of discussion, we also decided to move Mortis up into the B tier. Really it comes down to the fact that he has really high mobility and being able to pick up those bolts, but he lacks in almost every other area of Siege. So he does require two teammates on his team to really be high DPS rollers that are also able to control the center. And if you have that, then Mortis can be a very solid option. Okay, guys, we have discovered every single change for version 10 of the tier list. It is now time to reveal the overall tier list. And there you have it, guys. That's right. We've got Pam in the golden S tier position overall with 19 out of 21 points. The only two tier lists that she did not get S tier was Heist and Brawl Ball, where she also got A tier. The other brawler I wanted to talk about was Jean, also in the A tier, just just barely with nine points. The tier list definitely suggests that he's stronger than I originally led on to, but he's certainly a high skill cap brawler that you really need to practice to make sure that you can play to perfection. Also, we've got Shelly and Piper clear down there in the B tier with four points. We got Piper in the S tier for Bounty and in the B tier for Duo Showdown, and then Shelly in the B tier for Gem Grab, Solo Showdown, Duo Showdown, and Brawl Ball. Lastly, guys, I wanted to give a huge thank you <laughs> to the guys right there for really helping put this tier list together. They have spent countless hours discussing and discussing and discussing the meta to bring you guys the best tier list around. Additionally, I wanted to give a huge thank you to my YouTube members and Patreon sponsors for helping support my channel in such a big way. And for now, this is Kairos Time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.